I wanted to take a look at a more complicated kit. So I ordered this oscilloscope for $15 from Banggood and in this episode we'll find out if it's worth your time and money. The first thing I noticed was how well this kit was packaged. Everything was neatly wrapped and the components came in their own small bag. The PCB looks fantastic and the quality seems to be very good. All the SMD components were already soldered and the chips are original parts. The supplied manual and instructions are the best so far. I've never received such a cheap kit with proper documentation. They even included the circuit diagram and the user's manual. Let's take a look at the through hole components now. There are quite a few of them. The kit consists of pin headers, a BNC connector for the probe, three different types of capacitors, a crystal, slide and tact switches, a mini USB and DC jack, two small female pin headers, transistors and regulators, a connector, four standoffs, quite a few resistors and inductors, two diodes, an LED and a power inductor. Now let's build it. Start with the most annoying part, the resistors. These are annoying because there are so many of them. Refer to the manual to find the right position for each resistor. After you are done with them, add the chokes. Followed by the diodes. Make sure to put the right diode in the right spot. Check the part for a number and refer to the manual afterwards. We'll also have to make sure to put the diodes in the right way around. The parts are marked with a white stripe and it has to line up with the white line on the PCB. Then add the crystal. You can't put it in the wrong way around. Now put the USB socket in place and solder it in. Next come the push buttons. Simply put them into the holes on the right side of the board and don't forget this one down here. Next add the capacitors. The 11 large ones go in first. These should be 0.1 microfarad ones. For the other ones read the number that's printed on them. You can either use an online calculator or do it by hand to determine their values. Make sure not to mix these up, because they all look similar but have different values. Next, add the LED. The longer lag needs to go into the hole marked with a small plus. Proceed by adding the power connector. Make sure that the notch faces outwards. Now to the transistors. These have the same package as the regulators, so you will have to check their number again. 8550 is Q1, and 9014 is the second transistor Q2. Simply bend the legs a little bit and solder them in place. Then proceed with the regulators. The 79L05 is the first and 78L05 is the second regulator. Add the capacitor trimmers afterwards. Followed by the power inductor. Both parts are not polarized. Then proceed by adding the bigger electrolytic capacitors. These are polarized, so make sure to align the white stripe on the package with the negative side on the PCB. Therefore the longer lag of the capacitor has to go into the hole marked with a plus. Add the power connector and all the pin headers next. The pin headers can be a bit tricky due to the small pad size, but you should eventually get there. Add the three slide switches afterwards. They can only go in one way around. Finish the build by soldering in the large BNC connector. This one can be particularly hard because you need to heat the thick pins up for quite some time to assure a good connection. Now to the verification. Add the small test loop by soldering in a small piece of leftover wire. A 1000 Hz signal will be generated at this loop and you can later use it to calibrate the device. Short JP3 on the board with a little bit of solder and proceed to assemble the small LCD daughter board, but don't put it on yet. Next you'll need to verify that all the parts got soldered in properly. You can do this by applying 9 volts at the DC jack and measure the voltage at test point 22. Your meter should read 3.3 volts. When it does, disconnect the power and short JP4 just like you did with JP3 earlier with a bit of solder. Now you can connect the LCD board and finally test your new oscilloscope. You can use the test loop on the board. Push every button and use every switch to verify that they have a function. And if they do, you're good to go. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time yet to properly test the device, but so far I have to say that I'm pretty impressed with the quality and functionality of this device. I have never received such a good kit, especially not for 15 bucks. The kit came with proper instructions, good quality PCB and parts, works right out of the box and it's useful too. However, the assembly was pretty hard and you will need a lot of patience and practice to get it properly done. So this kit is definitely nothing for beginners.